The new text-to-image model release Flux is already inspiring some incredible ideas from the community. The results are promising with text generation and using simple prompts produces very high quality output. So I'll walk you through the quick installation process of where to find the models, how to install them and how to run it locally for yourself inside of Comfy UI. Visit the Comfy UI page here by Comfy Anonymous and by following the instructions here we will download a few models before using Flux in Comfy UI. You can follow the link here which will allow you to read more about the developers and also the diffusion model. Back onto the page, we need a few requirements. So the first to install is the clip models. So follow the link here to the Hugging Face page. On Hugging Face, the link provides us with three models, but we only need two models for the installation. Firstly, download the clip underscore L model. This is mandatory. Click the arrow next to the model and save it into your Comfy UI directory under models and this goes into your clip folder. Next, then back onto the page. If you have more than 32 gigs of your system RAM, download the FP16 Safe Tensor Metal. But if you have a lower memory or less than 32 gigs, then download the FP8 model. So I'll go ahead for the FP8 version. Click on the download arrow, save it into the same folder as the clip model. So from here, I'll close this and go back to the web page. You need a VAE model as well for Flask. Click the link provided here on the page and this will open up to the Hugging Face page for the VAE file. So click on the download icon here and the file name is ae.sft. Save this into Comfy UI under your models VAE folder. Once this is done, I'll close this again and go back to the page. Next, there are two variants for the models provided here on the page. We have the Flux Dev model and also we have the Flux Chanel model. For commercial and personal use, download the Flux Chanel model which we will be using. Open the link to Hugging Face once again. See, this is a huge file size, so make sure you clear some space on your hard drive directory for Comfy UI before going ahead to download. Uh, from here, you can click the download tab here and save the model into your Comfy UI under the models folder and save this into the unit folder. So let's recap if we have all the requirements so far. Under the clip folder, we should have two models, which is the clip underscore L and FP8 model, which I went for. Secondly, under VAE, we should have the AE.SFT file. And thirdly, we should have the Flux model, which will be under your models unit folder. Once we have all the requirements downloaded, I'll go ahead to open up Comfy UI. Starting Comfy UI may take some time due to the initial installation of all the models, so it might take some time for all of this to be done. All right, so this is all done and Comfy UI is opened. Next, this is a very important step. Go to the manager, click update all to update all the custom nodes in Comfy UI. Then you also need to update Comfy UI, which is very, very necessary. After updating Comfy UI, close and restart the web UI. If you do not do this, your nodes will be outdated for the workflow for Flux, which I experienced earlier. So make sure you update Comfy UI as well as your custom nodes before moving on to the next step. To get the workflow, go back to the web page and we can simply save the image from here uh, since we are using the Chanel model. So I'll go ahead to right click and save this. Once this is saved, drag and drop the image into Comfy UI to load up the workflow. So looking at the workflow, we can see the structure is quite different from the usual default workflow. This uses a sampler custom node instead of a K sampler. And I have a few workflows which I have explained how you can use the sampler custom node. So I'll go ahead to provide a link in the top right corner now. So let's go through the nodes of the Flux workflow to input the settings and test this out. So I'll zoom into the first node, which is the low diffusion node. In here, the main model for Flux, which is Flux Chanel, will be loaded here, which we just downloaded. With a weight type, if you have more than 32 gigs of system RAM, leave this setting at default. But if you have less than 32 gigs and also you encounter out of memory errors, then go for the FP8. Next and down is the dual clip loader. My clip name one will be the model FP8, which we downloaded from Hugging Face. Also make sure you match this to the weight type of the low diffusion node. For FP16, use the default in the low diffusion node. And if you are going for FP8 model, use the FP8 selection as well in the low diffusion node. My clip name two will be clip underscore L, which we also downloaded earlier. Uh, for type, I'll leave this and select flax. I'll zoom out here and next to the right is the clip text and code node. So this will be our usual positive prompt. One thing to notice is that the workflow does not include a negative prompt node. 
and below this is the empty latent image. This will be the image size used in the image generation. You can choose any resolution compatible with SDXL which will work well. So I'll go in for a 1 by 1 ratio which is 1024 by 1024 and I'll leave the batch size at 1 for now. Moving on is the random noise node. This will be the usual fixed seed or randomized seed numbers we are usually used to. Scrolling down the sampler selection here, I'll leave on Jurela, but you can still experiment with other sampling methods to see what works best. I'll leave this at Jurela for now as the default. To the basic scheduler node, the image generation for Flag Chanel only takes one to four steps, so leave everything here at default with the settings. And I'll zoom out and moving to the next is the VAE node. We have already downloaded the model, so this is already selected by default using the AE.SFT file as the VAE. Scrolling to the right is the save node. From here, we have all our inputs and settings aligned, so go ahead to use the Q prompts to check and generate the default prompts to see if all of this works correctly. I realize the rendering time might take way longer than you expect for the first time, so be patient for the generation to carry on and once this is done, all the other generations will be way faster. Alright, so all of this is looking good from the default prompts and from the default workflow. We have the first generation with Flask and the quality is just amazing, especially using the SDXL resolution. If all of this runs smoothly with the default prompt and the workflow, then you are all good to go. You can go ahead to experiment with different prompts to see the outcome of your ideas. So I've spent some time to change the prompt myself, playing around with different ideas to see the outcome. So I left everything else to default except the prompts to achieve these results. So the final results were all impressive and positive. Some still needed some tweaking as a text to image model. But overall, the results were all amazing and quite impressive. So hopefully we can have this train for animation projects as well, especially with the advantage of the SDXL resolution. I hope you guys are able to get this running smoothly and also experiment with the Flux model to see where you can take it. Leave a like if this was helpful and thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in another video.